Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video and welcome to Moscow! Yes, I'm here in Moscow still and I thought I'd go to Russia's largest shopping centre and see what it's like today. Is it busy? Are people staying home? Is anybody spending money? Let's head on inside and check it out. Now walking into Avia Park is a very strange entrance. Most people very typically come here by the metro and the entrance and exit to the metro is just off in the distance. It's called CSK Metro Station, which is also the same station you'd catch if you want to come to the football here. The stadium is five minutes walk down the way. So you can see everybody kind of streaming in. It's always very strange this because it's kind of like you're coming in via the car park, not via some main entrance or traditional entrance, but we're going to swing around with everybody and we're going to follow this kind of for a never-ending path of people and get on inside. Now there's not many things in Moscow I have gripes about and I'm always, you know, happy in all the videos, but why do people feel it necessary to park this close to the entrance, right here, when there's empty car park spots all over? This is the largest shopping center in Russia. There's parking spots everywhere, literally right here. But this guy with his fancy Mercedes thinks he can park right by the door. All right, let's manage our way through these very big turnstiles and get on inside. Uh, what's it going to be like in here today? Hopefully it's nice and warm. That's the first thing. It's very cold outside today, so hopefully the weather uh, is keeping some people at home. Now, I wonder wherever you live in the world, do you have a coat check? at your shopping center. This is completely free, basically just line up, you leave them your coat, and you can head on in the shopping center. You don't have to carry a bulky coat around in winter, and you can head on inside. So after navigating a couple of levels of these travelators, I've made it up to this kind of first level. I don't know how they tend to call the shopping centers. This is the first level, but it's really level zero to me, but so far, <laughs> there is a lot of people here, and I've just, <laughs> kind of walked in. Everyone's kind of uh, heading up, heading down. Again, this is kind of fairly well the main entrance to this shopping center, so it's always going to look a little bit busier here. But people are really streaming in now. Literally right opposite the entrance is Ashan, or Awa. It's Ashan, really. This is actually the largest supermarket in Moscow as well. It's actually a two level supermarket or they'd like to call them hypermarkets. I still call it a supermarket but it's two levels. Uh, this is actually the lower floor here which is where all the food is, all of the bakeries, uh, the kitchens if you want to have lunch and then here's one of the exits where you come out of the self-checkout but just looking back lots and lots and lots of people. Now, I was actually going to go to walk in Moscow today uh, around the center of Moscow where all the Christmas markets are, but considering it's a little bit cold outside, I thought I'll come to the shopping center instead. Avia Park is really not close to where I live. It's about two hours away, but it's a nice shopping center to come to. It's got a very big food court, so I've got plenty of choices to have some uh, lunch. So let's uh, check out the place a bit more. Now, if you are watching my channel for the first time, Maybe you don't know, but uh, there is a lot of videos of different shopping centers and supermarkets uh, around Moscow, particularly in Moscow region, which is where I live. And I do that mostly because that's my background. I was working in retail for pretty much most of my life since I was 15. I was working in supermarkets. I was working in duty free stores at airports on cruise ships. I was working in shopping centers. So this is really the thing that I do. Uh, in real life, <laughs> aside from being a YouTuber, we can see here the ReStore is fully open. This is essentially an Apple premium reseller. So there is a kind of a thing that people say that Apple left Russia. Now, essentially Apple was never really in Russia because they never had Apple stores. But they've got these kind of third party stores that obviously sell Apple products. Uh, and you can see there the iPhone 14 Pro. And of course, uh, lots of young people as usual. I think 
Apple uh, is hugely popular in Russia compared to my Samsung. So everybody wants to check out the new models of phones on offer right now. Now, apart from being the largest shopping center in Russia, it has also the largest cylindrical aquarium in the world. Yes, the largest in the world. Now, there was one in the news of a month or so back, but it was kind of a slightly different world record that that one held. But this is it right here now. Finally, I can get it into a nice shot with this new camera that I've got and the, the very fancy kind of wide angle lens. And there's still all the kind of Christmas decorations. What do you guys think of upside down Christmas trees? I wonder uh, what everyone's opinion of that is. You can still see the amount of people kind of uh, in the shopping center here. Let's see. Uh, every time I want to come to look at this thing, I'm obviously wowed by it every time, but there's a very famous eel in here, which I never seem to spot. And you can see here, here's the Guinness World Record, I guess, certificate, which kind of points out there. It was uh, held since 2015, this record, 20.31 meters. Now, it probably doesn't look as big on your phone or your TV, but I'm going to show you in real life. It is huge. Just want to point out a couple of shops here right in the one frame here. So Ola Ositan is still fully trading in Russia. Of course, it's understood that it's sort of changed the management or ownership. Now, this store next door here, now I've been to the shopping center quite a lot. This was the Nespresso store, which was in this spot right here. And obviously they're advertising Henderson, which is a men's clothing store, whether they'll open in this spot or not, or they've just kind of got their advertising on the front, but Nespresso has left the building. One of the other stores that I find very interesting here in this uh, shopping center is Tommy. Now, Tommy, how come after 10 months, everything's still in the store, all the mannequins are still set up, Obviously the store's closed, but how come you're still here? Are you afraid to leave? Do you have no plan to leave? They've even changed the uh, mannequins to the kind of winter jackets. So there's obviously somebody coming to work every day and doing some kind of work in the store, but obviously it's closed. So what's going on? You can see as I head up the escalator to the next level, all the people that are kind of drawn to kind of this aquarium here. There's actually a Christmas tree. I just noticed it right here in the bottom of it as well. But have a look up. All the fish are swimming up the top right now. They're a bit camera shy. So this shopping center is basically four levels. So they tend to make a lot of the shopping centers in Russia multi-level, multi-story ones. Whereas around the world, typically they're all over one level with the car park either underground or on the same level. But to obviously conserve a bit of space here. And if you want to have the largest shopping center in Russia, you're going to have to build it up, right? I mean, you can see how big. Now the roof here as well is just insane. This kind of span of the roof that goes all the way across. And then you can see kind of stores dotted around on either side of this kind of, uh, it's kind of got, a, it's kind of a curved shopping center. It's not essentially where you walk down alleys and around in circles, you go kind of from one end to the other. Now I thought I'd point out a few different stores that have reopened. And the first one I'm gonna show you here is Sneaker Box. Now, if you don't know what name it used to be, it used to be Rebox. Now the shop itself is exactly how it was and it's completely unchanged. Uh, literally everything is exactly how it was hung in the store. Just all they've really done is just change the outside signage. And that's pretty much about it. All the Reebok is still on display. All the products are the same, the shoes, and there's people shopping in there. Now I've kind of reached one end of the shopping center here and I just thought I'd have a look down and just sort of see all the people walking around there, kind of where we first walked in, level one, level two, level three, and then one more level is four. Just at the top of the elevator tower right here, you can see this elevator spans the whole way if you don't want to use the escalators, but even in this sort of far corner, there's still people walking around here. 
Now this particular store that I'm walking in is called Trend Island. Now it's not essentially one shop, it's kind of a whole kind of uh, floor space within the Avia Park shopping center. And it's kind of got the feeling of a department store, but it's not one owner. So essentially it's a whole series of maybe 200 designers who are able to lease space in here and trade as independent businesses. So if you may be a designer starting out, you're able to basically lease a little bit of space in here and test out your brand in Russia, in Moscow. And then if maybe from here, you could go on to open your own individual store. But Trend Island is such a kind of unique concept. It's kind of got that department store feeling when you're not really in a department store. So, and it kind of spans either side of where I'm walking out here. Uh, and it's really neat because it's kind of a lot of very small kind of brands and designers and maybe first time uh, clothing makers or manufacturers. And they've opened their own little mini store inside Trend Island. And having a look down at the aquarium again, such a nice view from here and how big it is. And then we can see here this, uh, they call it TI, but it basically spans the whole kind of middle level of the shopping center all the way down. Let's see again how many people are here today doing some shopping, but it's kind of the nearest thing to a department store that I can kind of explain. They don't really have them in Russia or in Moscow anyway, they don't, where it's kind of one store, but it's kind of a, a series of mini stores inside. Now, Avia Park, over the years that I've lived in Russia anyway, was very well known for having almost every brand store you could possibly imagine. So literally every brand would have its own standalone store or a flagship store, they like to call them around the world. Now, NCF right here, although it's got a sale going on, is, or was, the Converse store. Converse Shoes had their own individual store, and that's right here, NCF. Now, it's kind of just interesting how they don't necessarily come up with very complicated renamings of the stores, but uh, Converse was right here. And then they actually have a couple of other brands in here as well. So uh, Dr. Martin's Blower, I've never heard of, but that's Converse right there. Now this store right in front of me here, Li Ning, is kind of interesting because this was the store where Nike was, or Nike. Now this isn't a rebranded Nike store whatsoever. This is a standalone brand that's essentially taken space in this shopping center. And this is a, a Chinese brand, which apparently in China is incredibly well known, it's incredibly popular, but uh, it's incredibly well stocked. I'll give you that for sure. It's uh, got everything in here, but I've never heard of this store until I kind of read about it a few uh, weeks ago. There's only a couple of these around Moscow for now, but they plan to open more all over Russia, but Li Ning, how cool. Check out all the clothes here. This is a very nice store. But uh, I didn't think they, don't think they had to do too much to uh, remodel this store or reopening it from when it was Nike at some point, but it has everything in here. Very sporty, very uh, young fashion. Uh, but check it out, all the shoes on the back wall over there. Men's and ladies shoes. Things on sale, that's what I like when I come shopping. I like things on sale. But yeah, very nice store. A lot, plenty of brands. Now the one thing, is it really important what brand is on the shoes? I mean, I think as long as they're comfortable, they're durable, they're hard wearing. I think it doesn't matter if it's Nike on there, Adidas on there, you know? But there's plenty of choices. It's very nice. This is my first time walking in here, so I literally hadn't seen this store before now, but it's got plenty of stock, there's plenty of staff running around. So they're obviously one of making a good go of this. I mean, if you can open a store in the largest shopping center in Russia, you know, that's your thing, you know? Gotta make good. Now, after walking out of Li Ning, I really have a question for everybody. I mean, are you fashion conscious? Does it worry you that a company like Nike left Russia? Uh, you can still buy Nike. I mean, literally street beats right here. You could walk right in and get a pair of Nike shoes within minutes and not have to worry that the Nike store's not here anymore, but does it really bother you that Li Ning has come in here and taken the space of Nike? 
Are you really worried about which brand of shoes that you buy? I mean, I think everybody will have a different question or a different answer to this, but let me know in the comments what you think of uh, other brands taking over the, I guess, very well-established Western brands that were in Russia. So this store right here, I just had to smile because I kind of literally finished the last bit and we got up to this store here called Hiker. Now, obviously Hiker or hiking is when you go on a walk, on an adventure. Now, this was the North Face store and there's not many North Face stores around the world, I don't think actually, but uh, this was it right here. But obviously since it's kind of changeover of management, it's now called Hiker. So just walking around kind of generally, uh, you can see a few different coffee shops right here, but uh, there is a lot of people in the shopping center, like really a lot. I mean, how many thousands of people, it would be a bit hard to kind of judge. As we see here, one of the Puma stores is not open, but you know, for every one store that's closed, you've got 10 other shops that you can still go to and buy shoes or, uh, a sweater or a hoodie or a jacket. Uh, there's not really a shortage of stores in this mall. And now, a lot of people kind of go, oh, it doesn't look very busy, you know, there isn't that many people here, but just keep in mind in Moscow and Moscow region, you've got probably close to 40 shopping malls, all within a, a, a one hour car drive or a one hour metro or bus ride. There's another shoe store right here if you're Kind of worried about Puma not being here. Urban Vibes. And you can walk right in and buy Puma, Adidas, Fila, Nike. So there's not really a problem that all the shops aren't here. You can see all the brands up on the wall here that are available in this store. Elise, ASIC. So yeah, no problems. But you know, the thing and what I'm sort of trying to explain a little bit in this video is that uh, people are here, people are shopping. You've got the choices, I mean, how many stores are closed in this shopping mall? Maybe 10 at the most. And there's still 400 other shops to shop at. So, and this Trend Island is uh, still going on this other side here. I kind of walked in and out on my little bit that I did and then it kind of keeps going all the way through here to the far end. Now, another reason shopping centers in Russia are hugely popular, uh, and it's not necessarily just because of clothing and the traditional stores. They've got a lot of uh, entertainment options. And here is essentially a two-level climbing gym. I don't know what you would call these. These uh, where you put the ropes, or ropes courses, where you put the ropes onto the harnesses and then the kids can basically go from the lower level down the bottom here up to this upper level up here. And the kids are basically doing this kind of all unaided. They've obviously got all the gear on, but it's pretty much uh, figure it out yourself once you get a couple of minutes of training. And then this place right here is kind of interesting. This is called Bricks. Now this is uh, a place where you can leave the kids supervised. And obviously Bricks Russia is a place where they've got kids toys so the kids can come in, the parents can leave them for half an hour, an hour, a few hours. They can go off shopping and the kids can have all the fun they like with Lego. So they can obviously build something, destroy something, change something. Um, but the kids are obviously perfectly happy because they can get to play with unlimited amounts of Lego here. Well, I'm pretty sure it's Lego. It's bricks really, right? Didn't Lego leave Russia? What am I thinking? But. It's kind of this multi-level kind of uh, activity center. There's a little upstairs area there they can climb around in. And, and then the uh, staff here don't really tend to do too much with the kids. The kids can figure out playing with Lego, I think, but they can do whatever they like uh, in here. And for anyone that was a fan of Ikea, this was the location. I don't know if people really miss Ikea in Russia. I mean, I miss going for hot dogs. <laughs> I miss the food at the food court. Uh, I don't really miss walking around. The Ikea's in Russia were so busy because that kind of uh, style of shopping suits apartment living, which is very common in Russia. Uh, basically, Nvidia has taken up the other half of what used to be the upper level of Ikea here. This is a huge uh, electronics, home, home goods store. They've got TVs, fridges, uh, any appliances, phones. So there's no real 
big loss to this shopping center, I don't think. I mean, IKEA would have brought a lot of people here, but uh, I don't think everybody misses it as much as it's kind of perceived in the media as much. It's just walking around a little bit more. It's kind of interesting just uh, how many people really are here today. And, you know, it might be kind of sort of interesting about, you know, there isn't people with lots of shopping bags. I see that in a lot of comments on my videos. You know, the place is not busy. There isn't people shopping. There isn't people spending money, but this kind of shopping center has a lot more non-classic shopping to it. So you've got a huge amount of restaurants right over here on this right-hand side on this upper level. And then there's also a lot of the kids' activity centers. There's cinemas. And then, I mean, I wouldn't say everyone's coming only to see the aquarium, but it's, uh, it's kind of very popular. And then as part of the food court as well, there's another one of these play centers over here as well. So it's kind of nice that you can basically sit down, you can go get some uh, food, and the kids can run around as much as they like on these huge, huge uh, kind of climbing gyms. This one's got the balls inside, so they can uh, jump around on those. And then you'll see pretty much all the parents kind of sitting around the outside here. Again, this is kind of supervised, or the parents come and go in there as well, so it's a nice uh, way for the kids to uh, tie themselves out for the day. Now, this store might be interesting to a few people as well, so depending on where you live in the world, uh, this store, obviously, there's no signage, right? Do you notice how it's completely blank? Now, this used to be mother care. Now, if you're in Europe or in England, you probably know Mothercare very well. It's a very recognized brand in, in England particularly, but all throughout Europe. Uh, it was never really hugely popular in Russia, but uh, they've actually now reopened. And the, uh, the plan is that they're gonna reopen with the name Mother Bear instead of Mother Care. So for now, there's no uh, signage in the store, but it's kind of, uh, it was there at one point, but now, now it's not there, but the store is actually completely empty of shoppers. Considering how busy the shopping mall is today, it's very interesting that there's virtually nobody inside the store at all. So as we look down to this lower level here, I just want to point out a couple of things that are kind of, uh, interesting. Well, I think they are anyway. I'm sure if you're kind of watching the video as a whole, you'll understand, uh, I'm sort of pointing out some of the stores that have left, some of that have took over, but Star's Coffee right here used to be Starbucks. Uh, this particular location was Starbucks. They actually have a second one uh, just up here on this upper level where I am now. So they've actually got two of them in the same shopping center. Almost you can see each other from where you'd sit down, but now essentially it's owned by a Russian uh, restaurant chain, which is the same of what was uh, Black Star Burger, or there's a guy called Timothy, who is a rapper, entrepreneur, restaurateur, who uh, basically took over the uh, existing shell of the business that was the Starbucks. And he kind of, by default, gained 100 locations for coffee shops. So now, if I just pan up here a little bit, now, depending on if you've watched some older videos or not, I pointed this place out before once or twice. This used to be Costa Coffee and now it's just called coffee. And the red color is still there, so it still looks like Costa Coffee. Uh, the machines are still there, the tables and chairs are still there. So everything looks very, very much like Costa Coffee. <laughs> but the, uh, oh, it's very hard to see, but the couple of letters right here have been removed, which was kind of where the logo was. So that's kind of uh, worth noting as part of this video. And I found one more store. I keep finding these stores. I, uh, I've been here so many times in this shopping center that I kind of forget now the uh, different ones that have changed. Now, this used to be Samsonite. And this was actually one of the Samsonite stores that was kind of uniquely with Samsonite products. But now it's basically called like uh, Luggage Pro or Suitcase Pro instead of Samsonite. So the store is still here. 
it's uh, definitely open. All of the things remain exactly the same. Just a slight name change, that's all. But Suitcase Pro, what do you think, everybody? Do you like the new name? So I think I've almost shown this in every video that I've made in the shopping centers, but JNS was the Levi's store. And JNS, like jeans, jeans? JNS is the, uh, what was the Levi's store. And then I wonder what's going on next door here, US Polo Association. Now, considering so many US brands have left, this US Polo Association is still open and has not changed at all since, uh, well, I guess since last year, if you like, as we look back here on this upper level here and all the people I see now, lots of guys just relaxing slowly, uh, being that's a bit later on in the afternoon now. And the ladies are still uh, eagerly shopping and running around all the different stores. Now, I've seen so many comments when I've filmed this aquarium on other videos about you've got to show the scuba divers and you've got to show them feeding the fish. And finally, here it is. And now I wondered why all the fish were swimming up the top, but check it out right here. The scuba diver is in action. And everybody's still getting photos still, but what good timing to uh, follow this uh, scuba diver around. Now it looks like a lot of people already know that he uh, comes down here. So he does this twice per day. I guess it's a he. Uh, I didn't really look too closely, but he comes and uh, sees that the tank is okay. Oh, I think that's the eel right there. Check it out. The very famous eel of Avia Park. And we finally got to see the scuba diver. Imagine this for a job. Sunday afternoon in Russia. It's minus temperature outside. And the scuba diver has decided to come and do some uh, just aquatic action in the shopping center. And off he goes again. I'm trying to kind of uh, follow him around a little bit here. And I'm going to hope he'll wave to us, but I guess not. He's probably busy. Looks like he's rearranging some things on the bottom down here. But uh, I imagine he's got to do kind of different maintenance things every day. Uh, I'm sure there's some sort of schedule that they've got to follow, but I'm pretty sure the fish uh, know when he comes in to do the feeding. Uh, he's rearranging some, I guess, some cor coral, I don't know. <laughs> he's not looking now, but I'm, I'll wave anyway to him, even if he won't wave back. So. <laughs> There he goes. He's waving to everybody. He's waving to all the subscribers, I hope. Look, I think he's going to send this bag right up now. He's going to put some oxygen in this bottle and he's going to make this bag float right back up to the top. This will be pretty cool, I think. Watch this, everybody. There it goes. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, everybody. So as I head on out of here and I try to find the exit, uh, it's always a little bit confusing. The entrance and exit with these up and down travelators are always a little bit strange to find your way. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. I just had to go into Ashan. My wife sent me a little message for a few things to bring home for dinner tonight. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you like the walk around of Avia Park, the biggest shopping center in all of Russia. Yes, I've been here before, but I thought I'd point out some of the sort of slight differences, some of the changes, uh, some of the brand names that have essentially stayed in Russia, just changed names, right? Samsonite, uh, JNS we've seen before, the Lego store, Mother Care. So yeah, post a comment, let me know what you think. It's actually kind of uh, busy getting out of here now. So I'm gonna get my way downstairs and get on the Metro and head on home. And I guess the only downfall with everybody leaving at the same time later on in the evening is the line for the coat pickup. So this is actually one of two different ones on the, uh, on the exit basically, so. 
You have to wait in line maybe five minutes to get your coat back. All right, so thanks everybody for watching. I just thought I'd show you the coat check line. Not everything is beer and roses when you come to the shopping center in Russia, but sometimes you gotta line up for something. So thanks everybody. I'll see you in another video. Bye.